It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview Natalie Darwicks, a former U.S. hockey player and current coach. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me on, Brandon. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to play professional hockey? Oh, yeah. I don't know if I, um, you know, was dreaming as a little kid that I was going to be a professional. Um, it was, it was more along following my brother's footsteps. Um, so at the time of growing up, I was, I was five years old and, um, you know, I was, it was either go to tap dancing class with my sister, or go to hockey with my dad and brother. And I always kind of gravitated that way. Um, and quite honestly, you know, when I got into it and, and started the imagination started flowing, uh, I always pretended I was a player on the Minnesota North stars uh, now they're the Dallas Stars, but at the time we had the North Stars as an NHL team, and I uh, I thought it was Neil Neil Broughton um, or Mike Crowley. He was a player in the Minnesota Gophers, so those were kind of my dreams that um, to play in the NHL and 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 to do that. But uh, I didn't quite realize I was a a girl, and there wasn't many opportunities. Um, but I didn't care. I loved hockey, and and I enjoyed playing. I grew up playing with the boys. Um, and then I switched over to girls hockey when I was in seventh grade, when, uh, the guy started to grow a little bit and I stopped growing. So, um, yeah, never really had any aspirations. Like I want to be a professional hockey player. I want to go to the Olympics. I just always loved hockey every day. And, and that kind of fueled the passion of, of opening up a lot of doors for me. Can you talk about, of course, what it was like playing for the university of Minnesota? Yeah, I have some of my fondest hockey memories, um, were from from playing with the Gophers. I was with the Gophers for three years. Um, each each of those teams went to the Frozen Four, um, and in my second and third year, we were back to back national champions. And you know, just the lifelong friends you make through through hockey, and um, just a lot of fun memories of my experience at the U and and, and coaches, and just opportunities and um, team camarader- camaraderie and. Um, again, the, a lot of my memories were, were stuff either in the locker room, um, or hotels or in away from the rink. Um, and then obviously being a good skilled team certainly fueled those other memories of, uh, winning championships and being a top team. What was it like to win back-to-back championships and hoist the trophy up? That was awesome. I, you know, I was, I was just kind of going back to, um, memory lane with another podcast last week and um you know growing up um you know always kind of we play youth tournaments and you would win a tournament here or there and stuff like that but um I I never in my youth hockey and high school hockey never was a champion you know kind of fell short a few years and was on some really good teams but but never could do finish the deal um so when I got to the U, it was like we had the makeup to have a championship team. Um, and it was honestly the first time that I got to h- throw the gloves up and hog pile the goalie at the end of the game, those those two years. So um, those were certainly memorable years, certainly years I look back on and go, we were certainly a terrific team on the ice, but uh, we were a team off the ice who understood roles and understood each other and, and grew as a team. And I think that's why we were successful. But at the end of the day, it's cherry on top. Um, calling yourself number one and, and getting to celebrate that. What was the feeling like whenever you hoisted up the frozen four trophy? I mean, it's great. I mean, again, I think you look at the trophy and you think of maybe people just think of like one game of the national championship game, but um, as an athlete, it's, it's such a culmination of a journey. Uh, it sounds super cheesy, but uh, just the growth throughout those eight or nine months, you're a team and, uh, the adversities you go through, the challenges you go through, the highs and lows you go through, it just kind of defines you. 
Um, and so looking back on those, those trophies, it kind of brings back all that nostalgia and all those memories. It's not always rainbows and butterflies and good times. It's, um, I think the teams that figure out how to face adversity and, and, and stare it in the face and, and, uh, and keep moving forward. I think they're teams that are most primed and successful at the end when it really matters. So to me that when I look at those trophies, you know, I see the big picture of, of what happened throughout those entire years versus, you know, maybe just the culmination of it. What was the transition like from you from giving up your senior year to play in the Olympics? Yeah, it was tough. I mean, I kind of fell into a, a year where um, I had to choose between the Olympics and, and college. And uh, I for went my last year of college at the University of Minnesota. Looking back, um, it's kind of a decision that I regret. Um, I would have I would have liked to go back and, and had my senior year. Uh, however, hindsight, um, 2020, I think taking that year and not going back um, propelled me to play four more years and go for the 2010 Olympics. So um, kind of a little give and take there, but um, my senior year of college, I, I took a year off and went to the Olympics in, in 2006. Um, same thing with high school, um, 2002, I was actually a senior in high school and I wasn't in, I wasn't in school. <laughs> um, so I, I missed a lot of the, the normal things that uh, 17, 18 year olds go through in their senior year, but I wouldn't trade in, I wouldn't obviously trade the Olympics in uh, for, for that either. So uh, just feel pretty blessed and fortunate about, you know, the doors that opened for me in hockey and, and, and the people I was able to meet and come across. What was it like playing for USA women's national team and going to the Olympics? Um, I obviously think it's um, the pinnacle of, of our, of our sport is to get to the highest level possible. And that's the Olympic games and representing your country. So um, in three Olympics to be one of the best, you know, 20 players in the nation and, and represent your country on a world stage and, and compete um, in an environment that a lot of people work very, very hard for and, and very little can do uh, just kind of makes you feel really blessed and, um, appreciative of, of, again, the opportunities that were awarded for me. I earned them, no doubt, and, and so did all the other athletes. But, um, you know, again, feel grateful for, you know, talent and hard work and, and uh, health and everything else. So it's obviously a huge honor to represent your country. Um, but I'm not going to be mistaken and say it was just me. There was a lot of, a lot of people that uh, supported me contributed to training or helping me find ice um, and, and pave the way and open up a door for for my training or my success to happen. Of course, during your time of playing the Olympics, were you also playing in professional hockey with like the PWHL? Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, during the Olympic year, you're together as a team, obviously uh, throughout the course of the four-year cycle when you're working your way up to to the next Olympics, you're on your own a lot to find ice time and to and play games and get on teams. And, and for me, um, the Minnesota Whitecaps were kind of a supplement for that. Um, I would have played some games here and there when I could um, to, to stay active and, and to increase my level of play and stuff like that. So uh, the, the Whitecaps wasn't necessarily what it was then, how it is now with the league and stuff like that and the resources. So um, honestly, it was just an opportunity for me to to throw on my gear and, and to get competitive. What was your time like playing with the Minnesota Whitecaps and putting on the jersey for the first time? Um, you know, like I said, it, it wasn't like a, um, a, a league like it is now. So it was kind of, it was kind of more pickup hockey uh, in, in a way where um, it, it players were rotating in and out. They would come when they could. Um, so it didn't, it didn't have like a, uh, a real team feel at the time. It was just a means to get ice, but super grateful for that opportunity and to have that resource to get ice. Um, Jack Brot, when he broke, obviously started it and um, still play now and still coach now. So uh, tremendous uh, people and, and grateful for, for them and allowing me to play for the Whitecaps. And any, every time I did play, it was a lot of fun. What was it like putting on the Team USA jersey for the first time, having USA on your chest? Yeah, I, I was 15 years old when I when I first put my uh, my real USA jersey on in, in an international competition. It was pretty cool. Um, the equipment manager at the time, Bob Webster, 
you know, called me over and, and, uh, had a, had a Jersey number 22 and, uh, called me double deuce and, uh, said, Hey, try this on for me real quick. And it felt really cool and, uh, super honored to do it. And, um, a lot of emotions, you know, it's a lot of hard work and to get to that point and, um, to reach it and, and to be able to put that USA Jersey on. And for me, I, I was able to put it on for, um, 11 years of my career. So, Never took it for granted. It was always a special moment. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll never forget that story when, when he made that gesture to do that for me. Of course, during your career, can you talk about the moment of winning two silver medals and one bronze? Yeah, so, um, you know, unfortunately, it's probably not the colors I, I myself and my teammates would have wanted. Um, you know, came up short in two gold medal games and then uh, had a disappointing semifinal against uh, Sweden and, and got bounced to the bronze medal game. So, um, you know, the Olympic outcome was a little disappointing, um, but nonetheless, looking back, it's it's pretty special to have three Olympic medals. You know, a lot of a lot of athletes go to the Olympics and walk away with nothing, um, or you can be Michael Phelps and walk away with with everything. So, um, you know, again, looking back. Even though there was disappointment competitively, it's still, you know, an honor to, to walk away with three Olympic medals and to be proud of that. Were there any players that you were looking up to during your playing time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think the first person that comes to mind is, is Tammy Granato. Um, obviously, she was a pioneer in our sport and a legend and uh, just an all-around rock-solid person. Um, great leader. Um, and, and it was pretty special for me. She was number 21 and I was number 22 in the roster lineup. And so we out, we had a little handshake before we went out and, um, you know, usually sat next to her in the locker room and stuff like that based off of our, our Jersey numbers. So um, just a tremendous advocate for the sport and uh, a tremendous person, even, even more. So uh, she was someone I certainly look up to. And, and there was a lot of other players as well. Um, who, who were tremendous mentors. Did you have any game day rituals that you had it to do before each game? Yeah, I'm not too superstitious, but, you know, if we played an evening game, I'd definitely like to nap, take a little nap in the afternoon. Uh, usually we'd, we'd go for a pregame skate in the morning, come back and have some lunch, and that's when I would, I would take a little nap. Um, that to me was always important. Uh, made me feel better and, and more rested for the game. Other than that, I mean, I wasn't too superstitious. I'd kind of do the same routine though before before games. I'd throw a football around with a teammate or two and kind of have some fun and and kind of be laid back. I wasn't never a, a get riled up and scream and shout and dance. I just was pretty chill before games. What was the transition like from you from going from being a Olympic athlete to now a coach? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think a lot of times when you're an athlete at a very high level, it's, it's hard to get back in the real world because you're so used to um, routines and performing at the highest level and um, kind of wired a little differently up here. Right. Um, but, but for me, it was, it was a no brainer to stay involved in hockey and, and what better way to do that through coaching. So, um, you know, I coached a couple of years at my alma mater, the university of Minnesota as a forwards coach uh, spent uh, three or four years coaching high school hockey here in Minnesota, which is huge. And, and now I'm at Hamlin University, which is a D3 school in St. Paul. Uh, this was my sixth, sixth season there. Um, and uh, we've really grown that program from the bottom of the barrel to a top contender in the nation. So it's been a lot of fun to be there and um, to stay involved in the game. And, and for me, it's all about how can I provide my knowledge of the game and opportunities I have and resources to make someone else better and, and to give them those same resources or better. So, I mean, it's all about giving back and, and, and things coming full circle. And I think that's where I'm at now. And, um, you know, I'm still competitive, uh, too old to play, but this kind of allows me to keep those competitive juices flowing, uh, to better myself, to, to share my knowledge to my players that I coach, um, and, and have the game be as fun as it is, was for me, hopefully for them. Can you talk about, of course, what it's like being the head coach 
and having that playing experience to help your players? Yeah, I like to think it as like when they're going through a time of adversity or, um, you know, any situation, I like to think that I've been through it as a player in my in my career. So I can at least relate to them, put myself into their shoes so that I know how to react best to the situation. Uh, I think that's vitally important this day and age, uh, especially with communication and and uh, getting the most out of your players is what makes them tick, what makes your team tick, well, what's going to make them better. Um, and for me, a lot of times I fall back onto my experience. Okay, they're feeling this. When I felt that as a player, here's what I would have wanted or here's what helped. Um, so there's a lot of times where I fall back on um, my experiences. Um, but I have to make sure those experiences in my head are what's in their head as well and make sure we're on the same page. Because if I'm thinking one thing and they're thinking the other with no communication, um, I think that's where a lot of pitfalls happen um, in relationships. So, um, but yeah, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be around a lot of high level coaches uh, um, to learn from, um, whether that's Mark Johnson, Laura Halderson, um, Dean Blaze. I mean, I've been around a lot of coaches through my career that I was able to be coached by. And um, I kind of bring those, those flares back to my own style. What was it like during your time coaching at your alma mater? Uh, I love coaching the Gophers. Um, it's, it has a special place in my heart. Um, it, it's, it's just an awesome program with a great facility and a lot of history. Um, so it was a lot of fun to be back there. Just for me personally, just um, the timing of my life, I was just removed from playing. Um, and I just, uh, I was kind of tired of the grind of, of hotels and travel and stuff like that. So that's why I choose to, that's why I chose at the time to go back and coach high school hockey, just to, to settle down and, um, you know, break the monotony of all the travel and not being home. So it, I love being there. I love coaching the top athletes and in, in the collegiate level. It just, unfortunately with my schedule and where I was at personally, it just didn't, just didn't work out. So that's why I went back to high school and that's why now I'm coaching D3. I got Got two little boys right now, a uh, soon to be six year old and a, and a four year old. So uh, I want uh, as much as possible to see them grow up and um, be a part of their lives instead of always be at the rink and, and miss it. So that's why the, the division three level right now is an awesome fit for me. That's wonderful. What advice would you have somebody looking to play professional hockey? Um, you know, I, I, I th again, I think it's not about like the, the end result of I want to go to the Olympics or I want to play professional hockey. It's what you do every day. Um, that's going to, going to get you there. So uh, I think we all can have dreams and aspirations. That's great. But how are you going to make those come to fruition? And if you love the game and, and you want to put work in, um, you know, that's my, that's my, you know, advice to you. Uh, it's got to be fun though. Um, and you got to want to get better every time. So, I mean, there's a lot of times in our training that, we didn't skate every day. Um, we did other things that we were still competitive and make us better and translate on the ice, but maybe that's going to play tennis and chasing down balls or running football routes or chasing pop flies for, you know, I'd rather do that than uh, having a strength conditioning coach say, Hey, Natalie, how would you like to do a hundred sprints today? Uh, <laughs> I'd probably uh, have a few choice words for him and or her and walk away. Um, but we didn't realize we were doing that when we were chasing down tennis balls and, and footballs and, and pop flies. We were sprinting left and right and probably a hundred times plus, but it was fun. So make the game fun. It doesn't always need to be serious. I'm going to squat this. I'm going to do that. Like get some buddies and, and play some games, shooting pucks. Um, think of some competitive games you can play and stuff like that. So that's how we trained is it was always fun for us. Are there going to be the days where you got to grit your teeth and, and get to work? Absolutely. But I'm going to come back every day if I know it's going to be fun and I enjoy it. And so that's my recommendation from a, a young kid to a person who wants to play professional hockey is you having fun with it. If you are, you're going to be, you're going to be so much better. What advice would you have somebody looking to get into college coaching or coaching after playing? Um, I think they'd really enjoy it. Uh, again, it's a way for you to now go. I mean, life is about full circle and can you pave a path farther for someone, somebody behind you so that they can go farther than you did. 
Um, and so for, for, for my advice would just be like, give your knowledge back. If you're passionate about it, if you enjoy it, carry that over onto the ice because you're going to impact the player at the very least. And if you just impact one person on that team, that's so valuable. Now, if, if you're lucky and you can impact half of them or all of them, well, great. Um, but I just think you'll find so much enjoyment. Um, I kind of, I kind of give it the example of, um, I'd rather give a great Christmas gift than get one. There's just so much fun and enjoyment in, of giving one. Um, and that's kind of what I've found through coaches is there's so much fulfillment and enjoyment in, in helping somebody in, and, and seeing the light bulb go off and them get it and get better. That's wonderful advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Oh, goodness. Well, they can find me. I don't know if they'll, <laughs> they'll get a whole lot of posts. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not one to, to speak up and post a whole lot. Um, but uh, I got uh, Twitter, Instagram, and, and, and Facebook. Um, uh, my, uh, my Instagram is Darwitz20. Um, again, you're uh, throughout maybe like the 10 years, five years I've been on it, there's been 19 posts. So <laughs> if you're looking for an active person to follow, it's not me. Um, but uh, you can certainly give a follow. Same thing on Twitter. You can find me at Natalie Darwitz and same thing on Facebook. Thank you again, Natalie Darwitz, for your interview and best of luck in your future in your coaching career. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Natalie, for your interview and best of luck. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.